All right, guys, we're gonna show you how to turn any wood top, desk, tabletop, countertop into a piece of concrete. What we have here is a custom built table we did for uh, our art projects, our technique videos, uh, built it out of wood. And now we're gonna bondle the edges, all the screw holes, and then we're gonna show you how to turn it into a slab of concrete. It's gonna be a really cool video. So what I got here, I got the Bondo. We're gonna mix this up. So the Bondo does have an odor, so you wanna be cautious of that. Probably wear a mask, open some windows, stuff like that. Relatively simple to use. It's best to make small amounts because it does set up extremely fast. Get a little bit out of that can, and then we're gonna, this is the hardener, so we're gonna run just a bead right over the middle of our pile. Doesn't take much. Now we're just gonna blend this together until we get rid of all that white. All right, so we got it mixed up good. We don't wanna let this sit very long. We wanna to try to use it immediately and then make another batch. So I got Alex over here helping me too. We're just gonna focus on the tops and we're just filling in the seams from the trim piece that we put on. And then also our screw holes. And then once this sets up, we'll sand it and then it'll be ready to be coated. So right here, there's a little height difference, and you'll see when I flatten it off, so that the trim here is a little higher, so we wanna kinda of level that off. And then it's always good before it sets up too much on you to clean off the area where you mix, that way you don't have to sand that a bunch when you're sanding. Next step is to sand it. I'm gonna be using uh, 60, 80 grit is good. We wanna sand through this quickly. Um, and I'll kind of show you that. I got it hooked up to a vacuum so we're not creating a lot of dust. Um, and then when, after you guys apply the Bondo, you typically can sand it within 15, 20 minutes. So it dries really, really quick. All right guys, so it's concrete overlay time. I have my kit right here. Countertop kit covers 50 square feet. This table is about 25, 26 square feet with the edges. So I'm gonna have to split this kit into half. So I'm gonna go through the process, show you what's in the kit, and then show you how to split everything in half. Very, very simple. So we'll do, we'll unbox these. All right, so basically the first step is just our primer. So we're gonna roll the primer on first. I'm gonna go over separating that because obviously we're only doing 26 square feet. Then we have our step one of the concrete overlay process. So this is the first step, second step, third step, and then obviously the top coat, whatever top coat you guys choose. We're gonna be doing a mat on this counter or on this uh, tabletop. 
So I can basically get rid of these because again, we're only doing the primer right now. All right, so what we're gonna need for the primer is a 3 8 nap roller, roller tray, and then something to mix it in. Now, if you're doing the full kit, you would just mix these two together, roll it out, very simple. But since we're doing half the kit, there's no point in wasting it. So we're just gonna separate these two in half. If you don't have small mixing containers, you can just pour them out, get them about the same half and half, and then mix them together. So I need to do five ounces of part A. So another good thing, we just I just had this package for this video. It's always good to stir the, the part A, because sometimes it can settle the polymers in it. And then we're gonna do, this is five ounces, so we're gonna do 2.5 ounces of this. Just to make it easier, I'm gonna pour into a larger container. really sticky so we want to try to get as much of that out as we can and it's actually really easy to mix so we'll just kind of mix this by hand all right so now we're gonna dump it into the roller tray and then we're gonna soak this roller up for a second And we're just gonna roll it out on the top here. I always like to do my top and then do my edges. That way I'm not leaning over it when the edges are already coated. Then I'll just try to eliminate any of these roller lines we have. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to do your step one, split it in half. Again, because we're only doing 25 square feet, the countertop kits are made for 50 square feet. So all we're gonna need really is some five quart containers, two quart containers, two and a half quart container for the liquid. Um, I'm gonna be wearing a mask because this is cement powder and we'll get right into it. So the liquid is 80 ounces for the full kit. So half of that is gonna be 40 ounces. So I need to go two up from 32 is gonna be 40 ounces. And again, guys, if you're, if you're getting the kit, it's always good to shake up the, the polymers, the primers before you pour them out again. I had this just, I had just had to make this kit so everything's fresh, nothing's settled in it. All right, so now we have half of our step one polymer. We'll get rid of that. Now we're gonna separate the, the powder. So it's always best to use a scale. Uh, this is 14 pounds of powder, so half of that would be seven. I'm gonna just do it without a scale to kind of show you how to do that if you don't have a scale. So we'll put on my mask and I'll just, I'm just gonna pour out, try to get these close, tap them a little bit, right? Get them as close as I can and that's kind of how I'm gonna separate them without a scale.
All right, now we have the powder separated. We got 72 ounces, 72 ounces. And again, by patting it a little bit, that's gonna really level it out, even it out. So really, really simple. So now this is basically what I'm gonna use for the first step of the concrete overlay. So I wanna pour the liquid into a container first. And it's obviously not, all the powder's not gonna fit in a two and a half quart. So when you're doing a full kit, you're gonna wanna use like a five gallon bucket for step one. Um, if you're doing half, a five quart, it'll fit in a five quart. So we're gonna pour the liquid into here. And you can clean these out, it's water-based polymer, so cleans out relatively easy. So if you wanna save these, same thing after it's mixed, you can clean it out um, and kind of keep that in mind. So I'm gonna put my mask on again, slowly add the powder as I'm mixing it with the drill. Um, pretty simple process. All right, so that's how you mix. Got a little crazy there in the beginning, but you wanna mix it for about two minutes, two to three minutes. So I'll get this stuff off the table and then I'll show you guys how to apply it. All right, so what we're gonna need for step one, a couple of squeegees, magic trials, and then a paintbrush. It's always good to, when you're done, just run under your edge, kind of flatten any chunks off or anything. Um, but what I'm gonna do is just focus on like two foot sections. I don't wanna just coat the whole top and then come back and do my edges. Cause again, we wanna, I just wanna focus on like a two, three foot section, get the top done, do my edges and move on down the line, just like you would in like a countertop or whatever. Um, so pretty, pretty simple to apply. We're just gonna start pouring this out and this is not gonna heat up in the bucket. It's different than the epoxy. So this can sit in the bucket for a decent amount of time. Get a, get a bead to my edge. Now I can work on my, my edges here. So I'll just start running it over. And then I'll just pull that up. And this is so I don't make a mess. And so we don't waste a bunch on the floor. Okay, so edges are basically coated. Now I'm gonna just start flattening everything off. I don't want any of these high spots, any of these trial marks. Notice I'm always tapping that so I'm not dripping or anything out here. So this top's basically done. Now I wanna go around and make sure my edges are all coated and flat. And don't worry about any tear marks or, or scratches like that because you're gonna get that on the first coat. The second coat's gonna fill all that in. All right, so that's basically, that section's done. I'm gonna do a little bit bigger of a section. Um, again, if it's your first time, it's always good to start small and then if you're tearing it up, do some bigger sections.
So again, I'm leaving a nice bead on my edge that when I do my faces, I have product to push over. And if you have someone helping you, you can focus on the top. They can do your edges for you, kind of tag team it and get it done a lot faster too. And it's easier to have more product and kind of see how much faster I did that with the extra product there. All right, so now we'll clean up the top, clean up our faces, and then we'll do the, the last section. So when you guys are trialing this out, I'm holding the squeegee at an angle, but I'm also applying pressure. And I'll kind of show you the difference from applying pressure and not. We want to kind of apply enough pressure because this has crushed marble in it, which gives us the, the height. So you can't really pull it so tight unless you hold it straight up and down, right? As long as we're at an angle, I can push down really hard and it's always going to put it down to the thickness of the crushed marble in the mix. And so if you're not applying pressure, you can kind of see the difference if I'm just being really light with it. You kind of see how it's a lot thicker and you, you can't really get rid of trial marks or get it perfectly flat when you're doing it like that. You really got to apply that pressure to get it all the same thickness. Then I'll just take the leftover, throw it in the container. So one of the reasons we hold the magic trial on the face to catch the product is if I just let it run down the edge, we'd, we'd lose a lot. We might even not have enough, depending on how much we waste on the floor to do the first coat. So it's always good to try to control the amount you're throwing on the ground kind of like we did by using the magic trial at the bottom, pulling that up, using it on the top. So again, just cleaning up my edges now, the faces. And then now I want to just double check, make sure I don't have any thick spots, any squeegee lines or anything on the top. Make sure all my edges are coated. Everything got a good coat on it. There's no missed spots. It just looked pretty flat. And then the last thing we'll do is take that paintbrush and just run that underneath the bottom edge. Flatten off those drips. And I don't want to touch the edge with the paintbrush because it will create lines in it. See that? So we want to just kind of not not touch that, just focus on the bottom. And if you wind up doing that, you can just take the, take the trowel and just kind of flatten it off again. So this will take about, it could take anywhere from 45 minutes to two hours to dry, depending on temperature, stuff like that. If you put a fan on it, it's gonna dry it a lot faster. So just keep that in mind. So we'll let this set up. We'll show you the step two. 
All right, we're ready for the second coat, which will basically be step two. But since we split the kit in half, I took the step one, and that's gonna do both coats, basically. So um, we don't really need to open up the step two bag. We can save that for later. Um, but before we do our next coat, I'm gonna take a scraper and just scrape the surface, knocking down any of the peaks of the crushed marble. I'll do it on the top, on the faces, and then I'll kind of scrape the bottom edge. So I'll kind of show you how that, how that works. So you can see the, the crushed marble peaks that we knocked off. And I already did this half of the table, so I didn't don't have to do it again. Just kind of showing you guys what you got to do. And then if you have any any say thick spots or stuff on your edges, you can kind of scrape those off too. I don't really have any, um, almost like chunks or lumps or anything. You can kind of scrape them down. And then the last thing we're gonna do is just run it on the bottom edge knocking off any drips or anything that's on there. And it's always good when you get to your corners to kind of push in and not push in from the corners and don't scrape out. You might catch an edge and, and tear the wood or make, take a chunk off. It's always better to come in on those corners. You can see it's, there's a few little wet spots. We could let dry more, but it doesn't really matter. It's still hard enough to be able to scrape it and coat it. And the other thing, we're also gonna be spraying water now to minimize sucking all the polymer out of the mix and setting up on us faster. So again, if you have a couple dry spots, if it's really, really wet and you can like, you know, obviously move it with your finger, that's gonna be too wet. But this, this is fine. These wet spots, they're still pretty hard. There's just a little bit of moisture left in them, which is fine because we're gonna be spraying water anyways. All right, so I'll mix our next batch up and then I'll show you guys how to do the second coat. Okay, so what I did, again, this is half a counter, one of our countertop kits, so it's 25, 26 square feet. So I just, just took the other half of step one that we separated into two, and that's basically gonna do our both coats, step one and step two, because step one and step two is the same coat. So now we have step two, full bag, that'll do another 25, 26 square feet. So that's kind of how we're doing this, because we're splitting the kit into half, and then, um, on this coat, we're gonna be spraying water for hydration because this is dry, it's porous, it's gonna be suck, soaking the moisture out of the overlay and it's not gonna give you as much working time. So if we can hydrate this, get a little moisture in it, it's gonna keep it from sucking the moisture out of the overlay, which is gonna give us more working time on it. And also, I, I, I talked about on the first coat, all these tear marks and scratches. That's because we're going over a sealed, basically smooth surface. Now that we're going over a textured, porous surface, we're not gonna get any of those. It's gonna fill in and look amazing. So first things first, we're gonna hydrate. Just a spray, uh, just a sprayer with some water. We don't want standing water, so I'll go around and just kinda hit, hit everything. Let it soak in for a sec, and then we'll probably hit it again, and then we can start coating. So we wanna hit our edges, make sure the top's nice and hydrated with the water. And I can always, you know, through the process of coating this, I can always stop, spray a little more water if it starts to dry out on me. And again, we don't want like puddles of water. We just want it to look darkened up. But there's a few spots, like right here is a little wet. Just kind of rub that around. So we just want to minimize any like puddles of water basically. All right, so we're gonna do the same exact process as our first coat. And I'll probably do half, half and half here. Again, it's always good to have more material to work with than less, because then you're always kind of fighting it, pushing it to get to where you want. It's a lot easier to push around a big pile. All 
You see we have no scratches or tear marks in it from the squeegee like we do here. That's because again, we're going over a porous surface and it's not a sealed surface. Okay, so that's basically the same process that we did on the first coat. Um, the only difference is on this coat, we're hydrating, and then when we're done with uh, coating it, we wanna go back, because if, if I just kinda, if I go like straight lines, I don't know if the camera picks it up, but you can see the chatter. It leaves a little bit of chatter because of the crushed marble. Um, I like to go random swipes with the squeegee, different directions. It kind of makes it more natural looking uh, tops because you'll notice that once we do our uh, smooth coat, our scratch coat. So what I do, just go different directions. And you'll kind of see the chatter's kind of going all different directions, which gives you a really cool look with the finished product. So I always start on, an, on a corner, an edge, and I just kind of go different directions. Now we have kind of a random flow of a pattern of chatter out there, and then once we sand this and do our scratch coat, it'll give a really cool, unique look on the surface. Another thing, depending on which way you angle the squeegee, um, like if I angle it in, it's gonna push all the product towards me. If I angle it out, it's obviously gonna push the product out that way. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to finish it off so you're not leaving stuff behind, you know, behind where you're trying to feather out and get flat. And then we'll just pour this back into the bucket. Now again, we wanna do the random pattern on it with the, the squeegee going different directions. And you don't have to do like circles, you could go just straight back and forth, all different directions, there's a lot of different ways. You can even go straight back and forward, but whatever you do on one section, you gotta kinda do the same thing throughout the counter or top or whatever you're coating, that we have a consistent pattern on it. Last thing, we're gonna flatten off our edges. And then I wanna just walk around and make sure everything's been coated, there's no missed spots. So I'll check for that. And then the last thing we'll do is just scrape the, the bottom edge. Like right here, we got a little missed spot. It's hard to tell because we have a coat of overlay underneath it, but it's not a huge deal if you missed that because the scratch coat would have filled it in. But it's nice to just find those before. All right, so now that we got the first coat under the edges and stuff, I'm just gonna take a, you can do a paint stick, a scraper, a tongue depressor, whatever, and we're just gonna knock off these drips that are on the bottom.
and it won't keep dripping because it again it's a different different than epoxy it'll hold on the on the vertical surfaces so we don't have to come back and scrape this again all right so that's the second coat it's starting to look like concrete uh, so tomorrow we'll come in sand or you know if again it takes about an hour hour and a half depending on the temperature put a fan on here it's going to dry a lot faster you can do both coats scratch coat and seal in one day um, if you get the fans on there you're not in cold temps but i'll come by it's end of the day so sand it clean it and then we'll do our scratch coat and that's when it really starts to look like uh, a poured concrete countertop or or whatever you're trying to go for to make it look like concrete all right so i'm going to go through sanding so after the second coat's dry we want to sand it we want to get it as flat as we can the the, the more you sand the flatter you're going to get this the the better your finished product's gonna look. So I've already sanded the majority of this. I'm just gonna show you right here. And if you come up and get close, I'll kind of show you the difference. So you can kind of see this is really bumpy and stuff from the crushed marble. And then this is all after it's been sanded. And you can really see the, the design in it now. Like I was telling you, we wanna go random directions. If you look across that table, you'll see chatter marks going all random directions. So that's gonna give us a really cool look uh, when this thing's finished, but I'll go I'll show you how to sand, relatively simple. And then I'm gonna sand my edges with, uh, I think I'm using 120, yeah. So I'm gonna do 120 on my corners. Um, if you're not you know, familiar with sanding, you can do this by hand because you don't wanna sand through it and, and get down to the wood. So I'm using 60 grit on the top. I'll switch to 120 on the, just on the corners. I'll use 60 grit on the faces also. And then on these corners right here, you want to sand these by hand always because it's real easy to go through uh, with a palm sander on these corners right there. So I'll kind of show you how we do it. I'm going to be wearing a mask just because there's going to be a little dust, even though we are hooked up to a vacuum. So pretty fast, um, 80 grit on the, or 60 grit on the top, 120 on, uh, on the corners. And then I like to take the 120 and then come and do these by hand. Again, it's real easy to sand through on these spots. And these black marks are just from the vacuum attachment rubbing on it. So last thing, we want to vacuum it. We want to clean it really good. And then I'll show you guys the final overlay step. All right, so we did two coats of the texture. We sanded, we cleaned it. Now we're going to do our third coat, the scratch coat, which is going to fill in all these low spots and give us that smooth, polished concrete look. So again, we're splitting every kit. So I'm going to split this into two because this is enough to do 50 square feet. Again, we're doing like 25, 26. So the step three polymer has 32 ounces, so we need 16 ounces. I'll give this a little shake. It's always good to mix your polymers up, like I was saying before. And we'll pour out 16 ounces. And then we need to separate our powder into two. Perfect, so we're just a little bit over 24 ounces on both. Again, it's best to do it with the scale to get it exact, but this is relatively close. Just make sure you shake it up, kind of flatten that off, pack it a little bit, shake them both the same amount of times, um, and you'll get it really close. All right, so now we can pour the powder into the liquid. I'm gonna throw my mask on.
Okay, so we're basically ready for step three. Um, again, we have a poor surface, so we want to hydrate. Um, and it's very crucial not to get standing water on this coat because this doesn't have any crushed marble. It's almost like a paste. So any amount of water is gonna really thin this out. And if it's thin, it's not gonna fill in these low spots as good. It's gonna wanna pull out as we're trialing it. So we wanna do a nice fine mist. We basically just want it damp looking, like this is about perfect right here. And another thing you can do is just spray it instead of trying to be real methodical in your misting and then just wipe it. This is probably the fastest way to do it. That way you're not waiting for it to soak in, trying not to get too much, and then we'll just wipe the excess off. So tools we'll need for this is just some metal scrapers. Small one for my faces if I need it, and then big one for the top. Make sure they're clean, you don't have any chunks on it because if it's all jacked up or bent or there's any chunks from leftover product on it, it's gonna leave scratches or scrape marks in it. So make sure those are nice and clean. And I'm just gonna apply it basically the same way we did these two coats. Again, I'm just using a different, different tool for it. So we're gonna scrape it really tight, get it as tight as we can, um, do sections at a time, do the top, faces, and then kind of work down the counter. And this stuff will set up a little bit faster because it's thinner. It uh, doesn't have that, the crushed marble in it, and this is going to soak some of the moisture out, so we don't want to try to do too big a sections. And this goes relatively far. So again, I'll start on my top. Get some product all around my edges. But notice how it fills in all the low spots. The main thing is just getting it all coated and then we'll come back and clean it all up. So all I'm doing here is just getting the excess off the edge. And I'm not worried about leaving chunks or anything on that edge, because in about 10 minutes, I can come through and mold that with my hand and, and make that look really, really good. I just want to make sure that edge is really flat like that. And then we're going to finish up the top. And if we have any low spots, we can just run back over that real quickly. and then we'll just clean it all up. So it's beautiful. So when that dries and we top coat that, it's gonna look absolutely beautiful. So we'll just keep moving down the line. Spray a little bit more hydration. Now I wanna be really methodical with how I spray because I'm not gonna be wiping it off. And you can tell it's starting to thicken up on me, which is okay. I just wanna get the, this spread out. And I'm looking for any like low spots or stuff that didn't get filled. I 
And then if it gets too thick to work with, you can just kind of throw it away, but I'm gonna use that over here. Just try to get kind of caught up here. You can see the thicker that gets, the harder it is to work with. So we'll just get rid of that for now. Pour out some fresh stuff. If you guys have spots that are like tearing because maybe you took a little too long, we can lightly mist it. Got some right here. Get a little bit of product. And the more random random swipes and stuff you do, the cooler the, the finished product's gonna look because it's gonna look really unique. No concrete's really perfect. It's all kind of random and a lot of variations in it. Again, I'm not worried about these edges. I'll kind of show you how we can blend those in. So I have enough here to technically do another coat on the top. And if you want to, you totally can. You can just start coating it again. Um, you would want to hydrate a little bit. Um, but again, the, the better you coat this that with, without a bunch of water and, and thinning this out, it's going to fill in a lot, a lot more and be a, a flatter surface. But this is relatively flat. Like you can see right here, we have some kind of unevenness. If I just miss that with a little water, and you don't want to spray a lot. Okay, that's the, that's a different sprayer. We just want to mist. And make sure you mist away too, because your trial is going to hit other spots. We can just fill that in with a little bit of water. Again, you don't want to spray a lot. A little goes a long way. Since I sprayed a little water in some spots, I kind of want to just go around randomly and just spray a little water and just kind of trawl that in. It's not doing nothing, but just in case that spot will look a little bit different, I want to make sure I have some other spots on the top that has that same look. All right, so now a little bit on our edge here. I'm just gonna make sure I've hit everything. There's no like dry spots where I can see the, like right here we have a little spot. Wasn't hit all the way. We just wanna hit that. So stuff like that. 
here's a little there's a little spot right here we could hit and if again if it starts to tear a little light hit of water all right so this is probably ready to blend my edges so you can see we have kind of some chunky stuff on the edge this is still a little wet so but like right here it's starting to dry out I can really just mold that edge and make it look really good same thing with this edge just kind of rub it in rub the bottom in you know again if, if it's too wet like right here if I just blend that it's really wet we want to let that set up a little bit more and then we can go around and get all our edges looking really nice so that's why we're not worried about leaving some chunks and stuff on your corners. See, now we got a nice looking finished concrete top. We'll throw our matte urethane on here and it'll look absolutely beautiful. Like this is perfect timing. I can rub all that in. This is a little wet here, so we'll wait. So I'll let this set up a little more. I'll rub these edges in. Um, and then when this is dry, I'll show you guys how to do the matte urethane on it. All right, so next step is our urethane mat. Uh, we have gloss mat. You can even epoxy the overlay um, if you want that really high gloss look. Uh, I love the mat, so I'm gonna do mat on here. Again, you can do whatever one you guys want. If your preference is gloss, we have those options also. So we're gonna split this kit into two because again, this is half of a countertop kit, about 25 square feet. So there's our B. And I'm gonna give this a shake. Always wanna mix your part A's up before you pour them out. And then we're gonna take our part B and we need five and a half ounces, so I have these little cups. Again, guys, if you don't have small measuring cups, you can just get two you know, plastic cups or whatever and just get it equal amount. So we're gonna go to five and a half, so in between five and six. So now we're gonna dump our part B into the A. We want to get as much of that out as we can. And then we're going to mix this and we need to add 10% of water. So the full kit takes four ounces. We're going to do two ounces because we split it into half. So we're going to mix this and slowly add our water. And you can mix this with a slow speed drill or by hand. It mixes really, really easy. And we're gonna be doing two coats because the overlay is different than epoxy. Uh, it's porous, so it's gonna soak into the overlay. So that second coat's gonna give you the protection that you need. And the cool thing is, is we don't have to wait on our urethanes for them to completely dry on the concrete overlays. So I can coat my second coat within about 30 minutes of applying the first coat. So we'll mix it, we'll scrape the bottom, scrape the sides. All right. And then we're gonna be using a 3 8 nap roller, already been de-shedded to get any loose hairs off of it. And we're gonna use a, a roller tray We'll basically apply this just like our primer. Take a second, get this roller soaked up nice. And then we're just gonna roll a little strip down the side, down the middle there, and then we're gonna cross roll it. We're just gonna do small sections at a time, do the top, and then we'll do our edges. Make sure we hit the rounded top there come under the bottom a little bit.
And then notice it when I do my edge, it creases the roller. So I don't want to do my back roll right away. I want to flatten that roller off. And then I'll do my back roll. And don't worry about seeing any lines or white stuff. You just don't want thick roller lines. So notice I'm getting about two roller widths out of one dip. I want to kind of continue that, continue that amount all the way down the counter. I don't want to try to stretch it farther or make it make it thicker. I want to kind of keep it even all the way through the counter. And these are the lines I'm talking about. These are all going to disappear. It's just because we're overlapping. The overlay is soaking the moisture out of the top coat, which is making it turn white like that. All right, so that's how you do the urethane over the concrete overlay. We're gonna put a fan on this to speed up the dry time, um, and then I'll come back and coat it in about half an hour. We'll do the second coat, and we'll show you guys the finished top tomorrow. All right, so it's been about 30 minutes. Um, basically, you're ready to do another coat. So we're gonna apply the second coat the same exact way, and we'll show you guys tomorrow how it looks. Um, it still has that gloss look to it, because it's during the process of it, of it drying. So once it's completely dry, it'll have that dull matte finish on it and look absolutely beautiful. So I'm gonna do, again, and we put the fan on it too to kind of speed it up, but same exact process. Check it out, finished product from wood to concrete. It's that simple with our concrete overlay kits. You can transform any hard surface, formica, laminate, tile, wood, whatever it is, you can make it look like concrete just like we did here. The cool thing about our overlay kits, they don't add the weight. This only added 22 pounds to this top. If we would have poured this in concrete, we did the math, it would have added over 650 pounds. And again, guys, it's still lightweight. Super cool product can go over any surface um, and also comes in different top coat options. So we did the matte urethane on here. We also have gloss options. You can also do a flood coat of epoxy if you want that super high gloss look. But it's a sealed surface, it's concrete now, and you saw how easy it was.
Hope you guys enjoyed that video. It was a lot of fun making. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of our new videos coming up, and we'll see you on the next one.